here. Okay, if memory serves me right, we are at number 70, right? Okay, let's go ahead and begin. And you know, before, no, okay, go ahead, 70. Uh, Barbara Lynch, Land Development Coordination. Uh, VAC 1921 is a request by the Hillsborough County Aviation Authority to vacate property in the Drew Park area, and I have a map for the overhead. They're interested in vacating South Rinelli and Osborne from Air Cargo Road to West Shore. And this is the first of two vacatings that they're going to be filing to vacate property between Hillsborough, Tampa Bay Boulevard, Air Cargo Road, and West Shore Boulevard for airport development. Um, this map is just a, it shows you the lots, layouts, and, and here's Air Cargo Road, which was developed about 10 years ago as part of the airport expansion. Yeah. Um, I guess for audiovisual, may we have that on our screen? If we may. My eyes aren't that as good as they used to be. And just for a little bit of uh, historical purpose, I this is the section. Does anyone know how to make this a little bit? Uh, oh, this? Uh, okay. Okay, thanks. Okay, so this is the section uh, that this vacating is in. It's right in this area here. And the red is all the areas that have been vacated by the airport over the years as part of their uh, future development and current development. Um, all these roads are improved, they're paved, there's not really any curb or sidewalk, there's some ditch systems. This is South Avenue looking west from Air Cargo Road, and this is uh, South Avenue looking toward Air Cargo Road, so that's the intersection. Um, this is South Avenue looking west toward West Shore Boulevard, and um, Cooper Boulevard is within this area that was previously vacated. And this is south looking toward West Shore Boulevard. And again, at south at West Shore looking east toward Air Cover Road. So that's the stretch that's being asked to be uh, vacated. And then Rinelli Drive is a north-south street between South and Osborne. And this is Rinelli looking south from South Avenue. Uh, Rinelli looking north from Osborne. And Rinelli looking north toward South. So that's the stretch that's gonna be vacated. Um, this is Osborne Avenue looking west from Air Cargo Road. This is Osborne looking east toward Air Cargo Road from West Shore. And Osborne looking uh, toward West Shore at Cooper Place, which again, that had been pre previously vacated and is barricaded in this picture. There's two structures remaining in this area. Uh, the airport has acquired the property and they will be demolished. Uh, this is one of them, they're, they're both on Rinelli. So these are, are now owned by the airport. They own all the property abutting these right-of-ways. And then this is a, sort of what the property looks like. It's all vacant. They've demolished the structures over the years. So that's looking south from Osborne, looking north from Osborne, looking west from Manelli. So it's all pretty much uh, vacant now, east from Manelli and north from south. Uh, the airport's uh, done a really good job of working with all the utilities. Uh, we do need to retain some easements for wastewater, water, stormwater, and TECO people's gas. There's no objections to this request from staff. Do you have any questions? Any questions? Yes, sir. If I remember correctly, about 10 years ago or so, the, sit the airport and the last airport administration spent a lot of money in that area on infrastructure. Do you, do you, were you around then? Do you remember that? Well, they did a lot of vacating. They've been acquiring all the property in there for future development, and we did a lot of vacatings. And that also, like when you look at this. I remember in addition to land, they did some improvements. To, um, yeah, they did. They did Air Cargo Road, which is a yeah. huge development, you know. If you look at the Elmo. And are there other, are there other properties that they're going to come back with? Or? Well, is everything vacated? I'll, I'll let Adam answer that because he's really here okay, as okay, so. uh, showing, you know, to show you what they want to do there. But they do plan to do the rest of the right of ways between Hillsboro, Tampa Bay, West Shore, and Air Cover Road. That's the second vacating that's already been filed. Go ahead, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Adam Carnegie with Stantec. I represent the Aviation Authority, and. Um, 
Susan from the Aviation Authority is here in case you need to ask her any questions. Also have Larry Sensor from CAE. I'll explain who CAE is as part of answering your question, sir. Um, these, this petition to vacate is such that, if we can have the Elmo please on screen, is being done so that this facility can be uh, built this is a facility within which 600 people will be working once it is complete. Uh, you may or may not have attended the, the groundbreaking ceremony that, was, uh, that recently uh, occurred. That's the governor and your mayor and our mayor and other people at that, that um, groundbreaking. But the, the two streets, two of the three streets that are being vacated are in this location. South Avenue <coughs> runs east-west, so you are now looking east um, across the site that, uh, that, that will be developed once these streets are vacated. Renelli Drive runs north-south, and so you see there are actually buildings that are going to be on top of the corridors once these are vacated and once utilities have been built. <coughs> so that's, um, just looking at it more uh, schematically, that is the, the area of the facility that will be built, the CAE facility that Mr. Sensor is here uh, representing. Um, you see on the west side, that's uh, West Shore Boulevard, and on the east side, that's Air Cargo Road. Um, this facility, this, this whole area, kind of bigger picture, um, the, the whole, uh, this goes to your question, Mr. Carlson, this is an excerpt from the, um, from the master plan that was approved by the airport. The three, the three red streets you see there are the streets that are before you today to be vacated. But as you can see, the east development area extends from Hillsborough in the north to Tampa Bay Boulevard in the south. And then this is Air Cargo Road and former West Shore. As part of the master plan for the airport, all of that east development area, the old Drew Park area that has been acquired over many decades, the last two pieces of, of property within which were just acquired in July, uh, this is all going to be used for large footprint airport related development. The CAE project is one such project. Uh, so there are others that are, that are queued up and are going through permitting so uh, just eliminating the streets and allowing for large footprint uh, developments within the East Development Area is, what, is why we are doing this. Now understand that there's a lot, of, uh, um, a lot of work that has gone into this. For example, just as one small piece of it, the, as you can see here, this is a recent decision for the particular development that is going to sit on top of the streets that we are asking you to vacate. This is a record of decision for the environmental assessment at the federal level. So we are coming to the city to ask that these be vacated because there's no other way for the airport to build and, and to build the East Development <coughs> Area and its component project without the vacating of these streets. So I just wanted to kind of give you an overall perspective. Um, before I finish, I, I do want to say something, maybe the most important thing I can say is you have a lot of really good city employees. Jimmy Cook and Barbara Lynch are more than good, okay? They are extremely knowledgeable. Doing large vacates like this within areas is, is the kind of thing that you need real expertise, history, and development experience to deal with all of the nuances. Without them, we couldn't have done this. I just really want to extend a great load of thanks to Barbara and to Jimmy, and also to thank Julie Hardy for drafting the documents. Any questions? Thank you, sir. Uh, any questions from the council? Thank you very much, sir. We appreciate it. Um, is anyone here to publicly comment on item number uh, 70? If so, please come forward. Motion to close. Motion to close. Okay. We have a motion to close by Councilman Escalco, a second by Councilman Citra. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? I believe, Councilman Maniscalco, this falls upon you, if you don't mind, item 70. Sure. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I have an ordinance being presented for first reading consideration. 
an ordinance vacating, closing, discontinuing, and abandoning por portions of right of way known as West South Avenue, West Osborne Avenue, and North Ranelli Drive, and replat of Drew Park, a subdivision in the city of Tampa, Hillsborough County, Florida, the same being more fully described in Section 1 hereof, subject to certain easement reservations, covenants, conditions, and restrictions more particularly set forth herein, providing an effective date. We have a motion by Councilman Maniscalco, a second by Councilman Citro. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Chair, second reading and adoption will be held on November 7, 2019 at 9.30 a.m. Uh, on item 71, may I please have uh, a motion, well actually, on schedule. Um, we don't need to take public comment on the rescheduling? No, sir. It can't be heard, so it's just a motion to reschedule uh, to the date and time. Okay. Okay. to reschedule is this uh, item number 71 to January the 9th, the year 2020, at 10.30 a.m. Second. We have a motion by Councilman Miranda, second by Councilman Citro. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Uh, next, 72. Thank you, Council. Rebecca and Kurt. before you begin this, Kurt, we just wanted to say welcome back, and yes. we, we love to have you back and with you and your expanding or expanded family. So Thank God you. bless you. We mean That's that. very nice of you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Rebecca Kurt, Assistant <coughs> City Attorney. I'm here um, on this item, which is a petition for review for a special use permit. The review hearing that is before you is de novo, which means you will be taking in new evidence. Um, however, even though you will be taking in new evidence, you are still limited by the criteria in your code. A special use is a use that has already been determined by your code to be allowed if certain criteria are met. In this particular matter, the criteria were not met, which staff will fully explain when they go over the petition to you. That is, the applicant is here today to ask you for a waiver to one of the criteria. Um, you will take in the facts that are presented to you by staff and by the applicant and apply them to the criteria that are in your code that I'm going to hand out to you. So you can look at them. They are your general standards. And what you're looking to see is whether or not the application as presented with the waiver still continues to meet your general standards. Um, after the hearing is closed, you will need to make a motion to either deny the special use permit or to grant the special use permit. And I'm going to provide samples of that to you. Um, you, will, you can read the language as written and then add whatever facts you are basing uh, your decision on. I'm going to then turn it over to Mr. Cotton to explain the petition to you. Good afternoon, Council Eric Cotton, Planning and Development. Um, this is a, a petition for review for special use 119-40 for a property at 5607 North Miami Avenue. Just to give you a bearing, this is in the Summer Heights Historic District. I don't see it yet. It's, um, this is Comanche, this is Nebraska, Powhatan, and Miami runs through here. So the applicant applied for an accessory dwelling unit in Seminole Heights, um, but throughout this, an accessory dwelling unit that could be up to 950 square feet, but it's just the maximum size of, a dwell of a, an accessory structure. This accessory structure was proposed at 1,252 square feet. In order to, they're asking to, they're asking to reduce the setback from the 20 foot in the rear, it has to be main structure setbacks to three feet, which is a typical accessory structure setback. In order to do so, do so um, they have to get a variance. They were granted a variance from the ARC, as well as a certificate of um, appropriateness for the construction and the design of the structure. So when they applied for the accessory dwelling unit, um, it comes to the point where, where staff has to deny the request because there's a provision in the code that says an accessory dwelling unit can't be placed into a structure that's either non-conforming or made conforming as a result of the variance. So as a result, administratively, we deny the request. The applicant has a the petitioner has an opportunity to appeal to city council and you can grant the variance as part of the special use um, petition. So this is the, the site plan. Um, this is the proposed garage. It's currently under construction. The required setback because of the overall square footage of the structure is 20 feet. They're proposing to build it at three feet. Um, just some photos. The top photo is, is the, is the um, main structure. Um, you can see in the bottom photo, the accessory structure through the, through the coverage of the trees. It's not, it's not overly visible from the street because of the, the landscaping. Um, these photos were taken from the alley itself. You can see the accessory structure is two stories tall. It's about 12, a little over 1,200 square feet. 
And then these are photos of the property to the north, property to the south, and just for your for your view, just the this is from the straight the property looking straight looking north down the street and south down the street. Um, does council have any questions I can answer or clarify? Thank you, sir. Any questions, uh, Councilman Dingfeld? Thank you, Mr. Councilman. Well, always thorough as usual. Um, why is it half half built or three quarters built? Well, they received a building permit for it. Yeah. During the building permit process, that's what the, the ARC, in a sense, when they got that variance from the ARC as well as the certificate of approvingness, they could start construction. What they don't show on their building permits yet, in my understanding, is the actual kitchen itself, meaning the ability to cook a stove in it. If council overturns the denial of the zoning administrator, they're going to probably amend their building permit, add the add the full kitchen in, and then commence with the rest of the construction. So right now, without the without the kitchen area, what is it? It's just it's a just an accessory structure. Just a garage. Without the kitchen area, they would, we wouldn't be we all wouldn't be here today before you guys. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Council. What, what what's the zoning on the property now? It is our SHRS, Seminole Heights Residential Single Family. But if I recall, these, these structures are allowed in Seminole Heights? Correct, with the special use. They're allowed to be accessory, they're allowed accessory dwelling units. Anyone else? Uh, thank you, sir. You're welcome. I guess the party uh, appellant, go ahead. Good afternoon, gentlemen. I'm Peter Spanos. I'm one of the owners of the property in question. Uh, when we went before the ARC, uh, first of all, the one comment that I'd like to make and clarify with all of you is our home is situated on two buildable lots. Our home is on one buildable lot. The lot next door where you see where we have, we've built this structure or started building the structure is a second build, full buildable lot. Uh, when we went before the ARC, we never um, hid the fact that we were going to be putting a kitchen in this structure. Uh, it was approved with that in mind. Uh, and the ARC's opinion was because of the size of the lot, the overall lot itself, taking into consideration both the house and the, the overall property, that this structure was um, proportionate to the size of the, the lot. Uh, so I'm a little confused as to why we are here and why we're even now this has become an, an issue. When we applied for the building permit, we followed the instructions of the city. They said, if you want to get started sooner than later, remove the kitchen, apply for a special use later, start the construction so you can get started on this project, and then apply <laughs> for am, am I correct on that? Okay. Um, and I'm sorry, this is our, our contractor, so I wasn't involved in all these this specifics. I just wanted to make sure that I was repeating that correctly. Uh, my understanding was that we were, we were instructed by the city to remove the kitchen from the plan, get started, get the building permit, uh, and then add the kitchen in at a later date. So that's, those were the instructions that we followed from the city, and now all of a sudden we're here, and to your question, sir, of why it's half built, we started, we started this process back in November of last year. Um, and so we had poured the foundation and started the first story of this. We were approved by the ARC in May. We got a building permit in July. Uh, and then we didn't get the letter from, from Mr. Cotton until mid-August. By that point, we had already started. The foundation had been poured. The first story had been built. Um, and the city has been coming out and approving every step of the way, every, every phase of construction. They've been coming out and uh, inspecting it and issuing the go-ahead to, to continue. So, um, again, that's I, I'm at a loss to understand why we're actually here today. Thank I'm you. Um, my name is Faye Sussick. I'm assisting Peter and Chris. And if you could I can hear you. Um, from the <coughs> beginning, we spoke with the, we had probably 15 meetings with the city, the employees of the city. And they told us we could build 950 feet. It should be a, a footprint on the on their property. So we designed it as that. They have another small storage unit, and so we made sure everything was confined to 950 square feet of footprint, with a six less than 600 
square foot apartment. And we made sure our engineer drew those plans to the specific uh, to what the city told us. So this accessory, uh, accessory dwelling unit is actually only 600 square feet. The 950 square feet is including a garage, so all they're trying to rent out is 600 square feet. They're not renting out the entire garage, they're gonna be parking their vehicles in the garage. So once again, we're a little, I think the, the code is a little vague on what what is what they're going to rent out comp yeah I, it's it's even hard to explain here um, the 950 square feet is actually not what they're trying to rent um, that but as, as far as even in, in and if you could restate your name sir please sir peter spanos thank you uh, even in the, the letter that Mr. Cotton sent, it says uh, accessory dwelling units, and, and it, it emphasizes dwelling square footage. Uh, so our, we're well within the limits of the dwelling portion of the, of the construction. So uh, there's been, over this whole process, there have been so many missteps and miscommunications and redos uh, because of the city, really, and the city acknowledged that in our ARC um, hearing. Uh, we've gone through three, we had to do three different plans based on the misinformation that the city had given us. Uh, so I understand that it's very confusing even for the professionals. Um, so, like I said, I, I guess we're still somewhat confused as to why we're now at this process. Thank and you. one more thing I'd like to add, Thais Seslick. Um, one of the reasons why the ARC was open to uh, approving this variance was because of how quickly Tampa is growing and how the sh shortage in affordable housing and rentals is becoming an issue and will become a bigger issue. And I think that's one of the things we need to take into consideration when um, you guys vote. Um, you know, without a usable kitchen, all they can do, and, and they will be able to rent this space, but it's not with you know, a usable kitchen, anything to be able to cook your food. It's just a bathroom and a sink. Um, so if you could keep that in mind as well. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Okay, any questions from council? Uh, yes, sir. Yes. Hi, Eric, can I ask you a question, please? Actually. Yes, sir. The petitioner stated this is on two buildable lots, correct? It, it's on two. In Seminole Heights, the platted lot is considered to be a conforming lot. So it is, they have, I think, lots in eight and nine of their subdivisions. Okay, I, again, I'm just saying, if this were granted, how would it affect if they split the lot and somebody else was to come in and, and buy the property in which this is on, them building a, a new house? Um, the, if they were to split the property, yes, the, the accessory dwelling unit becomes a primary use on the property. So a new house can be built unless they get a special use for either the one in the back or the one in the front. Kind of Thank you. I do want to clarify on the letter that was issued by staff. We distinct, but we, we have a distinction between an accessory dwelling unit and an accessory structure, which is underneath the closed captioning. So there's the two issues that are before you. It's the accessory dwelling unit is capped at 950 square feet, as is an accessory structure. Their accessory structure is greater than 950, which is why they're before council today. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Oh, one more thing, oh and ma'am, if, if oh, uh, it, did they, had, uh, they, so they, wait, they, they still have time, correct? Okay, go ahead. Uh, that, that's another kind of gray area there. The reason why we received the variance was for the setback. So technically, we are building on that second lot. The reason why they gave us the variance, yeah, the setback, it, we should have been something like 10 feet and now they, they gave us the variance to be three feet because um, I, I guess that's what a variance is for, but why are, are we now going back to being, uh, why is the 950 square feet being brought back, yeah, back into the? Eric, I'm planning a development. It's still considered one zoning lot until they go through a process and actually se separate out with a separate folio number, separate deeds and all, it's considered one zoning lot. That's what the need for the accessory dwelling unit was. 
That's why they were, that's why they went to the special use permit. And clock again. And th this will go ahead. And you're how much Thank more time do they have? Just, oh, okay. So go for it. Peter Spanos. We've lived in this property for 30 years. Up until very recently, this separate lot had its separate. It had its own address. It was somewhere within the last two years or so that the city deemed it appropriate to create a and make it one lot. And the only way that that became of, of knowledge to me is when we started going through this process. And they said, "Oh no, no, it's one large lot." I said, "But." The, the lot next door to us was always a separate buildable lot. It always had its own address. So, it, and if I may, Councilmember Randy has a question. I, excuse me, but I, I was all right until what I heard. Now, you just said that there used to be two lots, and the city made it one lot. How can the city do that? That was a, that's the question I asked, sir. I asked that very, very same question because we were never approached about that. I as don't to think whether, we have the right to do that. But go on. Oh, okay. And just as far as and excuse me, just as far as the variance is concerned, I just want to clarify that point. All the buildings, if you all are familiar with Seminole Heights, all of the accessory dwelling units, all the garage apartments and all the garages are built up right against the property line in the alleys. Uh, and so current code was was making was calling for it to be built 22 feet in from the property line. So that was part of the reason for the variance. If we did that, we were going to destroy some very mature trees and foliage, which the ARC was. I'm further confused. There's got to be a trail of some folio number. How did one folio number become two? I don't know, sir. I mean, I really don't. I, I, that's. Go ahead, sir. Okay. Eric Time, Planning and Development. The city doesn't combine or either join or disjoin folios. That's done by the property appraiser's office. If there were two folios on that property in two separate lots, and they were combined together, that's usually done either by the property appraiser with the property owner's permission. The city's not part of that request. That's what I'm saying. I don't think we have the right to do that. I don't think they have the right to do that. And again, sir, I can't answer that question. All I know is when I was involved with, I was on the uh, committee that created this, that helped create the historic district for Seminole Heights, and I did the, the footprint of every building to help us apply for and become a historic district. And I know for a fact that our lot next door to us was listed as 50, 5605. Well, what I'm saying is it's gotta be somewhere in somebody's office, in some department of some entity, a reason why. Okay. And, and I don't and, know that reason. And nor do I, sir. Um, and I don't know why that has become an issue. And Have I don't you know done why. any investigation with the property appraiser's office? No, sir, because right now, this came to light as we were going through this process. And at this point, we have no intentions really of selling that property. And once the ARC granted our variance and granted the building per, or the ARC didn't build the building permit, but we got our building permit, our purposes were, were met and we don't, it becomes less of an issue now. Um, so it didn't seem to be as important. Um, council, the issue of whether or not it's um, two lots or one lot can't be resolved today. If they want to continue this hearing, <coughs> we can look into what happened or they can proceed forward and try to resolve it today. The bottom line is they are here today because there is a nuance in your code for accessory structures. You may agree with it, you may not agree with it, you may want to change it. But today, as it stands, if your lot became legal because you got a variance, which they did before the ARC, you have to get a waiver. They, they, got, they got the variance. Their lot is legal. The structure is legal. But to have their accessory dwelling unit because of the way your code is written, they have to get a waiver. We can look at that in the future, but that's where we are today. The only other option is he could continue this hearing. He could see whether or not he can make them two separate lots, make the accessory structure a principal structure, but that's a completely separate process that is going to, frankly, take some more time, um, or we can try and get it resolved today. So may I ask another question? And Councilor, I'm sorry, I, I, and, I don't know. And I, I'm sorry, sir, state, state your Peter name for Spanos. the record in Suleyn. I'm know. sorry, we've never met before. Rebecca Kurt, Assistant City Attorney, I apologize. And so, and I'm, I'm not being adversarial, I just want to, just to clarify this and understand this. When we went before the ARC, the plans that were approved were with the kitchen in it. And it was approved with all those elements. So 
it wasn't until we went before the city to get the building permit and then the, the city advised us to remove the kitchen so that we could expedite the process and then put the kitchen back at a later date. So I'm not understanding why we were approved with all those elements and it was very clear in the ARC's letter that they were approving it with all those elements. And so Ms. I, Kurt, I just, then Councilman Dingfelder has a question. Rebecca Kurt, Legal Department. It seems like this could have been done differently and perhaps had him through this process, um, let him know that he needed to be through this process sooner. I'm not sure what happened, but certainly I, I apologize for that because it would have been helpful if you were told at that time that you had to go through this process. However, the ARC doesn't have the ability to grant these waivers. They don't have any control over the use of the property. So whatever the ARC did, they don't have the authority to have granted this use. It's not within their purview. Thank you. Councilman Dingfelder. Yeah, um, perhaps more of a comment than a question, but now that I'm getting a better understanding of how we got to where we are today, I think I think it would probably be in the petitioner's best interest to, to, of course, it's always your choice, but to allow us to move forward and see where this goes. Um, unfortunately, the co this, I don't know, I can't remember the exact word that Rebecca used, but this sort of anomaly in the code um, perhaps needs addressing down the road, but that doesn't help you because you're here today dealing with the code that we have. And there's nothing, we can't change the code ad hoc like that. So all we can do is go ahead and review the administra administrator or, you know, who made the des decision, they were between a rock and a hard place too uh, because you didn't meet the, the criteria, the waiver criteria. So the only ones who could, Wait, who can overrule that is us. So let's see where this goes from here. Thank you. Anything further, sir? I would just encourage and you, name, please. If you don't mind. I'm sorry? Name. Peter Spanos, I'm Thank sorry. You. Still Peter uh, I <laughs> encourage you, I, I was listening to NPR, and they were interviewing on this very subject about the city, and they were interviewing city officials about density and the, the need for alternative housing sources, and they cited Seminole Heights as a prime example of having garage apartments and having a, a, a dwelling units close to the downtown area. Uh, so it seems to me that the city is going in that direction and understands the need for that, and yet our code is far behind what, where the city wants to go and believes that there is a need to go. Uh, and furthermore, we didn't. We were never told there was a waiver or a need for a waiver, or we certainly would have done that. So, thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Is anyone here to publicly comment on item number 72? If so, please come forward. Uh, motion to close, Council? Second. Second. We have a motion to close by Councilman uh, Maniscalco. A second, I believe, first by Councilman Dingfelder. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Uh, what is the pleasure of Council on this item? So, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Um, let's see if I can do this accurately. So, I'll move in regard to uh, SU 119 40. I'll move to res uh, respectfully reverse the zoning administrator's denial of special use permit application for that petition because petitioner has demonstrated that the petition, if the waiver is granted, is consistent with the applicable generous standards set forth in section 27-129. At the time of permitting, the site plan must meet all applicable codes and technical standards. See section 2761B and 27127B2. Um, specifically, I, I believe that that this uh, that this particular petitioner um, uh, demonstrated probably even more exhaustively to the ARC that this was a good project, that this project didn't impose on, uh, on, on any of their neighbors. Um, as stated, uh, originally this was uh, you know, two lots. Whether it is or isn't today is, is not really that relevant in my opinion. But uh, this is a large property. It can, it can accommodate uh, this. Uh, they're two-thirds of the way done with building it because they thought they could. And um, this seems more of a technicality to me 
um, in regard to our code. And after we're done with the motion, I'll probably address the code. But, but that's neither here nor there. As I said earlier, we're stuck with the code as it is today. And the only way to continue this project is to grant the waiver. And that's why I'm moving it. Second. We have a motion by <coughs> Councilman Dingfelder, a second by Councilman Menescalco. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Announce. Motion carried unanimously with Sue's being absent. Okay. Next, we move on to item 73. And in my understanding, this requires just an up or down vote. Yes, Rebecca Kurt, Legal Department. Um, this one should be fairly straightforward. This is not a de novo hearing, so you will not be taking new evidence or testimony. Um, the original request was for a lot reconfiguration in, um, I believe, Riverside Heights. And there were two lots, two plotted lots that were in north-south orientation, and the request was to have them be in an east-west orientation. The zoning administrator reviewed that um, pursuant to the code provisions regarding lot reconfiguration and denied the request. Um, a lot reconfiguration is the type of request that's noticed to the public, and the public has an opportunity for, to participate. Those sorts of requests, when someone challenges the zoning administrator's determination, goes to a hearing officer for a de novo review. That happened in this case, and the hearing officer reviewed the matter, agreed with the zoning administrator, and again denied the request to take the lots from north-south to east-west. Subsequent to that time, we have a letter from the property owner, or from the property owner's representative, saying that they were not filing any exceptions to the hearing officer's recommended order denying their request, and that they had no objections to you adopting the recommended order. I am going to submit um, three sample motions because at this time you have the ability to adopt, remand, or modify. However, because there are no exceptions filed and the property owner has said that they do not object to you adopting the recommended order, um, I would suggest that for your consideration. And if I may, this matter has never come to us before, correct? Or Rebecca Kurt, Legal Department, to my knowledge, this particular property has not come to you before. Thank you. Question. Uh, yes, sir. Go ahead. Ms. Kurt, um, I guess I'm sort of confused. I know some of these processes have changed over the years, especially with the hearing officer. Um, so as of June, the petitioner, Mr. Canassi, was, am I on the right one, aren't I? Yes, you are. Um, as of June 11th, he was, he was appealing this. He went forward with the various appeals. And yet we get to this point and they're not following an exception. I don't understand that. Mr. Dingfelder, I, I cannot explain it. I can just tell you that they have notified the city through a letter to the clerk that they are not objecting to the hearing officer's recommended order. They were challenging the original decision, but after they received the recommended order, perhaps it was so persuasive, you know, I can't put myself in their shoes, but they are no longer objecting to it. But, and, um, and that letter is in the record. And so you haven't spoken to the petitioner or their counsel. You, you, you think they fully understand the process? Um, I did not speak to the petitioner. He's represented by Mr. Grandoff. I exchanged emails with Mr. Grandoff to make sure I understood his position. Okay. And he's not here today. No, but he's aware. Of, he's aware of the hearing, and and I do understand that it's unusual. So I followed up, and I do believe that he, Mr. Grandoff, is well equipped to understand. Um, this process. Okay. Yes, he, w he would be well equipped to understand it. Uh, Mr. Fueo is mentioned here. I know, I thought he's one of the hearing officers. He, I guess he's not the hearing officer in this case. He was not. He was not. Just by coincidence, he's a neighbor or something? Uh, I believe he may have been one of the participating uh, parties. Okay. All right. Thank you. I guess, what is the pleasure of counsel? And we're down to one, two. And Mr., uh, I wanted to, uh, I, uh, Councilman Carlson said he will not be returning for the remainder of the meeting, as I believe he is, he said he's ill. Well, if I may then <clears throat> make a motion? Yes. I'd like to make a motion to adopt the recommended order as the final order. Okay, we have a motion by Councilman Maniscalco. Do we have a second? Second. Uh, all in favor of said motion? Aye. Uh, Any opposed? 
strange. Motion carried in three with Carlson and Gilles being absent. That was very quiet. <laughs> okay, next, let me. Okay, next we have item uh, 74. I strike that, I'm sorry. Actually, let's move on down. Next we go to item 81. Mm -hmm. Staff was here earlier for the Planning Commission. I don't know whether it was uh, Council's uh, desire to have them speak on this. Um, council may recall that they recently came to Council with their first list of the rezonings, or excuse me, the, the comp plan changes for the parks. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know what they had communicated to council, if anything, but it's council's pleasure how you wish to proceed. Is this just a report? Yes, this is an update. Yes, um, and there was, a, there was a memo from Randy Goers, which you can receive and file. And my, my understanding is, uh, uh, as they explained to council the, uh, at the, um, uh, when the first batch came through, that there are more forthcoming. Any comments from council? Sir. Oh. I receive and file. Yes. May I have a motion? So moved. May I have a second? Second. We have a motion by Councilman Escaco, a second by Councilman Citro. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, next, we move onward to item uh, 83, just for the written report. Um, we'll any discussion or receive and file? Moved to receive and file. Second. Discussion. Uh, anyone discuss? Okay, we have a motion by Councilman Citro, second by Councilman Escalco. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, next we move onward to item number 84. Uh, I know this is, uh, I guess we can accept this or if anybody wishes to discuss. Motion to receive and file? So moved. Second? Second. Motion to receive and file by Councilman Escalco, second by Councilman Citro. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Next we move onward to item number 85. I, I believe the um, the resolution has been drafted in that regard. Uh, Councilman Escalco, do you have anything to say, sir? Well, I had my uh, I work with uh, our city council attorney to uh, draft this resolution. My aide Lisa sent it out to everyone, and I hope everyone had a chance to look it over. If not, I have a, a hard copy here. And uh, I made my comments earlier. The public spoke. Those that came in support, and I would uh, I would appreciate everyone's support or whomever would like to support this and. Uh, uh, move this resolution. Any uh, Councilman Dinkfelder, sir? So, in in theory, in concept, I'm totally supportive of, of uh, the concept of uni universal health care and health health care as a human right, uh, and I'll support the motion. It concerns me a little bit because as we listen to some of these debates on television, mm -hmm. they talk about there's there's differing opinions between the candidates, and they talk about the expense of you know, of universal health care as opposed to perhaps uh, Medicare for all who want it, as some of them are referring to, which might be a little cheaper. I don't know. I, you know, it's it's uh, you know, it's a, it's out of my wheelhouse. So, so, like I say, in concept, everybody should have good quality health care, and that's the way our country should be. So, I'll support it. But I do have some concern about concerns about the cost. I, I, I feel the same way. No one's ever told anyone this exactly was going to cost, and this is exactly where the money's coming in. So I'm, I'm going to support it, but I don't know all the facts. I don't think the candidates running for office don't know either. They're being attacking each other on the same subject now for four months, and, and neither one's come up with a number. Anyone else? What a country. Uh, anyone else? Um, I'll give my two thoughts. I actually agree with those sentiments. You know, I, uh, Councilman Dingfelder and I are, are, have a, a photograph in our office of the same gentleman, Hubert Humphrey, and I always like to, whenever people ask me what my uh, political motto is or my political credo, I always quote Hubert Humphrey who said that the moral test of government is how it treats those who are in the dawn of life, the children, those in the twilight of life, the uh, elderly and those in the shadows of life, the sick, the needy, and the handicapped. Uh, that's what I believe in. I, I've always believed in health care uh, as a right. It really goes down to uh, my basic political philosophy. I believe in, in the idea, not to get all uh, political here, but the, you know, uh, Roosevelt, Truman, Stevenson, Kennedy, uh, Johnson type of idea that, that uh, uh, government ought to be active on behalf of the people. Call me old fashioned, uh, but that's what I believe. And that goes also to the issue of health care. There has been for 
80 years in this country, a long struggle to expand health care to people. You know, FDR originally wanted uh, uh, universal health care under Social Security, didn't even try to go there because he was lucky to get Social Security. President Harry Truman was the first president to formally propose an actual national health care plan, which actually was, in effect, Medicare for all. It was to be administered by essentially a payroll tax. Uh, he couldn't get that. There was a big fight. Um, uh, uh, with that, with the Congress, with the AMA, with health insurance companies, et cetera. And then uh, uh, President Kennedy supported Medicare. President Johnson got Medicare with the idea that he would eventually expand it. Uh, President Carter supported universal health care. President Nixon, a lot of people don't know this, actually tried to get some form of universal health care to his credit. And then, of course, President Clinton with the, uh, I think it was called Health Security Act, tried it. Uh, it, that unfortunately failed, and then it fell upon President Obama uh, for the ACA. And, and I heard uh, you know, somebody say that the ACA uh, hasn't uh, uh, done what it was supposed to do. I say the ACA, the Affordable Care Act, or otherwise known as Obamacare, hasn't been allowed to do what it's been supposed to do because of a lot of governors who have frivolously, and, and in my opinion, heartlessly, uh, stood in the way, including here in the great state of Florida, where over half a million of our fellow Floridians are being denied health care right now that would be paid uh, about 90 percent by the federal government. We are paying those taxes up as Floridians, but we don't get them back. And these men and women, uh, young kids, are being denied health care because of that. And I know that people have been fighting here in the state for uh, Medicaid expansion to get the money that we're paying for uh, to get for our people here. I, I've done uh, petition drives, including with your wonderful legislative assistant, uh, Councilman Citro, uh, for that. And I'd encourage all council members to support that 110 percent. Um, I, I support this under the ideas my colleagues do, which is I have long been a strong supporter of universal health care going back to 1997 when I interned with uh, then Congressman Richard Gephardt. And uh, that summer we passed what would become S-CHIP, uh, the State Children's Health Insurance Program, which sought to expand health care up to 10 million children. Again, something that continually gets pulled back and back. So my idea is that uh, the public sector has a real compelling interest. Uh, whenever it comes to health care. And whether you do it under uh, so-called single payer, a lot of unknowns there, whether you do it under pay or play, whether you do it under the public option, whether you do it under employer mandate, my issue is get it done. People are dying. Health care is a human right, especially for the richest country in the world. It's a shame. So just my opinion. Yes, sir. Thank you for that uh, history lesson. I appreciate it. No, seriously. You mm -hmm. know, going back to the 40s when I was born, uh, we had called mutual aid societies. Mm -hmm. Everybody paid the same. You would, from birth to death, they'd take care of you for the same amount. And it worked fine. You had clinics, you had surgery, you had x-ray machines, you had labs, you had everything. So we got so smart that they had to get out of business because the government came in, said we're gonna have these health plans. What was successful became unsuccessful. It was run right here in Tampa. You can go check the history of Gonzalez Clinic, Terrius Clinic, mm -hmm. Centro Pano, Centro Turiano. Mm -hmm. They all had their doctors, they all had their clinics, and everything was wanting wonderful. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, we learned a lot. And now we're paying the price for not doing what we learned. That's all, thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay, Councilman, do you wish to move the resolution, sir? Uh, yes, sir, I move the resolution. Thank you, sir. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion by Councilman Nascalco, a second by Councilman Citro. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, next, move onward to item number 87. Uh, I hear the snaps. <laughs> That's funny. Um, <laughs> item number 87, uh, uh, Mr. Um, uh, Shelby, uh, along with our city attorney, uh, Ms. Grimes, has helped draft the uh, resolution with regards to uh, the use of assault weapons. This this is one that I did. Uh, it it, it, it uh, unfortunately got held up for just a little bit over some uh, apparent confusions. Um, I, I'm not looking at any specific uh, legislation. Uh, essentially, just as, as the resolution says, from the federal level, from 1994 till about 2004, uh, we had an assault weapons provision in federal law that banned assault rifles, banned assault weapons, and there's a couple of other things that we're uh, looking to support here. Um, to me, this is just common sense. Polls show that up to 60% of Republicans uh, support this endeavor. I remind my friends that in 2004, uh, then President George W. Bush, or in 2000 and then 04, uh, when, when Governor Bush was looking to be president, he supported 
uh, extension of the assault weapons ban. This isn't some radical concept to me. This is just common sense, and, and that's why I move this uh, forward. So if, if anybody wishes to make, or any questions or comments or wish to make the motion, do you all need time to review it further? Any questions? Okay. Uh, sir? No, I'm happy to support it. Um, I understand it's a controversial issue, and I know this is just um, you know, a, a, an opinion uh, on, on our behalf, nothing where it's an ordinance or a law or whatever, no. but <clears throat> we have to look at a common sense approach. Uh, and this, this would tie into the whole thing with um, Medicare for All. When we ask what is our purpose in life, we are here to take care of one another, whether it's look after each other's health or take care and protect each other in, in the community. You have these weapons on the streets that have existed for the last century or so. Um, you know, there was, there was life and there was the world before that. But if you look at the news, if you see what happens almost daily or weekly, um, I think back to my first, um, when I first heard of a, a mass shooting, for example, and it was Columbine, because I was a freshman in high school. And when I heard it on the radio, I remember I was, I was 14 years old, I was in the car with my mother. I thought it was happening somewhere here in Tampa, and then I realized it was in Colorado. But, um, you know, before that, there was an innocence. You know, the worst thing you would hear at school, at least in my opinion, was some kids fought on the playground or fought in the parking lot and they got detention. But then you have two people with these weapons, whatever weapons they had. I don't remember the exact guns, but uh, with this mass shooting, essentially, you know, picking and choosing through the school and whatnot, and then committing suicide. Uh, after that, the view that I had, you know, about life and school and the innocence of just being a student, you know, going to class was now you have to be careful because if it could happen there, it could happen anywhere kind of thing. But beyond that, malls aren't safe, post offices aren't safe, uh, the airport might be safe, you know, because there's so much security there to get to the terminals. But everywhere we go, we have to be vigilant and aware of anything is, anything is possible, anything could happen. I have a lot of friends that, you know, they, they're concealed carry. Um, you know, Second Amendment, NRA supportive, whatever. I have friends on all sides, and they have their views, and we disagree. Most often, we don't even talk about these things. We talk about what goes on in our days. But, uh, you know, and, and, and I respect their opinions. You know, it doesn't mean I have to agree or, or whatnot. But we have to end the madness. We can't just sit by idly doing nothing while we see this happening in our news uh, on such a regular basis. Um, so I'm happy to support it. Um, and I, I'm glad you brought it up. Thank you. Anyone else? Mr. Yes, Chair, sir. yes. Um, <clears throat> being a concealed weapons permit holder and owning handguns, how, owning weapons myself, I am supporting you in this mm -hmm. uh, simply because gun sales through newspapers, which I wish you would have included in that, mm -hmm. and gun show uh, sales of weapons can be controlled if the person that's purchasing the weapon from a person at a gun show or newspaper takes that weapon to a reputable gun dealer and holds it while a background check mm -hmm. is being performed. I am not anti-guns, I am not anti-weapons, but I feel that we need to control more people with the weapons that are purchased by people that should not have those weapons. So with that, I will support you. Thank you. Anyone else? I agree with yes, uh, Council Member Citro. I am also a, uh, I have a permit to carry. I have various guns. I've never fired any one of them. <laughs> that don't mean that I won't tomorrow at the shooting range or something. But uh, I understand what's, what's before me. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Yeah, and, and, and again, to echo what these two gentlemen indicated, that this is not a uh, commentary on things like handguns, right, but, you know, uh, uh, rifles for hunting, et cetera. Uh, a lot of folks own guns for a number of reasons and, and rifles, et cetera. Part of it is a longstanding family tradition you have in this country, people who have owned guns that are, have been in families for generations, and, and God bless them, that's a family tradition. People own um, uh, guns to, to defend themselves. 
uh, because that's something that they are equipped to do. Uh, I, I, uh, and that's uh, something that I think we all universally respect. But this issue is separate and distinct in my, in my opinion. So if I may have a motion. So moved. Second. We have a motion by Councilman Citro, a second by Councilman Escalco. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Okay. Uh, next we move onward to item number 88. Uh, Councilman Miranda. No, I, um, this is an uh, item that I brought up. I saw it in the newspaper and I thought that. <laughs> that uh, somebody else is going to notify Pace, and no one did, including me. So I'd would like you, to take it off the Would agenda. you like to move that, sir, to another date? Uh, no, let me find out what exactly, how to, how to notify people, how to know they're at. Well, we know that uh, you, you are uh, Captain Ahab to the Moby Dick of Pace, so, uh, uh, so good for you. I mean that 100%. Uh, call call there, man. Call there, man. there you go. <laughs> it is true. It um, <laughs> four yes, it would appear. Uh, next, item number 89. Uh, that was Councilman Goods. Move uh, to uh, continue to November 7th. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, thank you. Okay. We have a motion by Councilman Escalco. May I have a second? Second. Mo a second by Councilman Citro. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Uh, next, we move to information reports and new business by council members. Uh, Councilman Dinfeld, or anything, sir? Uh, yes, uh, Mr. Chairman. In, in regard to item 90, which is the, um, uh, the termination or the proposed termination of Willibrader, uh, and the taking over the city of uh, the McKay Bay uh, facility. <clears throat> um, uh, if, did, unless I did it earlier. Did I do it earlier? Did I do the wheelbreader uh, McKay Bay earlier? I think you, you, were, you held off on making the motion. I held off on making I the motion. Did, yeah. Okay. Um, so I'd like a uh, relatively brief, I think they can do it in five minute staff report on the uh, 21st of, uh, of November. Okay. Um, do we have a council. We have a. Um, sort of Actually, you know what? There, there's no urgency on that. Why don't I put it until January? Okay. You got a specific date? Yeah. Let me look. It looks like we're our meetings are getting very full for the rest of the year. The um, ninth or the twenty-third? If they're both regular. Yeah, twenty-third. I'll second that. Okay, we have a motion by Councilman uh, Dink Felder, a second by Councilman Scalco. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Anything else, sir? I did have one other. Take your time. Uh, where did it go? All right, come back to me if you would. Yes, sir. Uh, count, we'll come back to you, sir. Uh, Councilman Menescal. So regarding the Citizens Transportation uh, Committee, however we're going to call it, and Gene Duncan spoke earlier. Uh, I was going to wait until February after you know we find out what's going to go on. So I'd like for her to just come back and give an update under staff reports. Um, let's say March 19th. Um, it, it's so far ahead that there's no there's no specifics here. So that's it. May I have a second or any comment? Second. Okay, and, I, and I'm strongly supportive of this idea. My, my view is the more citizens we get involved in issues like this and making people feel empowered, the, the better off things are. So I, I salute you for that, Councilman. Uh, we have a motion by Councilman uh, Maniscalco, a second by Councilman Citro. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Anything else, sir? Nope. Okay, Councilman Citro. Uh, nothing really. Uh, I wanted to make a motion on a workshop for a tree ordinance. However, it was brought to my attention that we already have one planned for the 24th, which is next week at 9 a.m. Um, hopefully, they're going to also include the parts of buildable area with on lots. So, uh, nothing for me today, Mr. Okay. Chair. Yes, sir. Uh, Councilman Moran, anything, sir? Uh, Councilman uh, Dinkelder? Yes. Um, it's all coming back to me. <laughs> So in regard to um, that appeal that we just heard of the zoning, administ zoning Administrator's decision, um, I'd like to ask staff to look at that, I can't remember what Rebecca called it, uh, the, the, anom the anomaly. This, um, just, just to see, is like, does this make sense? You know, it's like, in, in some way, it sounds like, it sounds to me like we have people chasing their tail. Uh, they, got, they went to the ARC. And then they get started, and then they have to ask for a waiver, and they're circling around, and the waiver can't get approved because it doesn't meet the code. So, and then they have to come to us. Um, so, anyway, I would just like to ask uh, the zoning administrator, staff, and legal to take a look at what happened there, and perhaps uh, come to us with suggestions on improving the code in the process. So if I may, um, Andrea Zellman, Legal Department. Um, one of the things I've been tasked with since returning to the city 
is working with the staff on a comprehensive uh, review and analysis of Chapter 27 and trying to streamline it, have it make more sense. We, we are looking for things just like this that, that you know, inner well, country, you know, self contradictory. My, my motion would be to add this to your list. And, and that come was back what I was going to ask you. I've been collecting a list. Rebecca, before she left, told me. What he talked about is number nine on the list of things I was going to give you. So it is already on my list, among on, many other things. So I, yeah. okay. Thank hey, you. Tommy speaking on the same issue. What most disturbing to me is how to two buildings go out become one without saying no matter everything. And it couldn't be by osmosis. Mm -hmm. Somebody had to do something. Yeah, and, that, and that's a whole uh, other issue. And I'm not asking for yeah. an investigation because it'll take ten years. Yeah. Too much, too deep. Anything else, sir? Yep. Thanks. Okay, and just really quick, if I may, I motion for Tampa City Council to prepare a letter of support of Ann Stork Center's a right of way program. And I can provide you all with a letter, very non controversial. The uh, mission of this uh, uh, program, I was presented to it under the MPO's uh, Transportation Disadvantaged uh, Committee, is to assist transportation disadvantaged persons by educating them about the different transportation services and instructing them how to use modes of transportation through a peer to peer approach. Uh, we have a motion from second. Councilman Vieira with the second from Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Uh, thank you. And then just very briefly, two two things. Um, I was asked also to do a, a commendation, which we will get next week, because I believe this month is the Planning Commission's, uh, I don't know what number it was, their anniversary, they asked for a commendation. But may I um, uh, have a uh, uh, council uh, uh, vote on getting a uh, um, a comment, I'm losing my words here, which is rare. A commendation for the Planning Commission to be presented sometime next week. Second. We have a motion from Councilman Vieira with a second from Councilman Moran. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. And then just very last, I wanted to remind all council members that on Friday evening, um, gosh, I don't have the location, but it's going to be the fifth annual Veterans Treatment Court uh, mm -hmm. holiday yes. get together. I would encourage everyone to go. Th this program is just an amazing program that has gotten national acclaim. Uh, it's led by our good friend Colonel DJ Reyes, Colonel Jim Fletcher, uh, Colonel Ron Rook, and so many great men and women. And it's an inspiring program, uh, and, and, I'm, and, I, and I love it. So I would encourage everyone to go. Uh, con or, uh, uh, Mr. Dingfelder obviously knows about it, having worked in the system. Yeah. And I know Ms. Hoffman here is a veteran. So, mm -hmm. yes, sir. It's uh, tomorrow. Yes. Five yeah. o'clock at the Center Club. There That's you go. I'd encourage everyone to go. This is a great program, and I love it dearly. Uh, yes, sir. A couple of items, Mr. Chairman. Uh, first of all, with regard to uh, last week's workshop that didn't take place, that was supposed to follow the CRA, but because it was uh, a lengthy CRA meeting, uh, we ran out of time. It occurred to me that setting it that at something other than a time certain does not work. You have mm -hmm. another one coming up on November 14th, um, another two-hour one. My suggestion is twofold. Um, you can either set it for a time certain at 1.30. To remind you, Council, that would make you have a morning CRA meeting, an afternoon two-hour meeting, and then you have an evening meeting. Your other alternative is just to remove it from the agenda, and I'll work with your uh, legislative aides to see if what time we can work out uh, something comprehensive, maybe a four-hour mm -hmm. one or something without um, you having to uh, spend an entire day. Yep. So if that's the case, uh, uh, to allow me to do that for the purposes of the calendar, if you can remove the workshop presently scheduled for November 14th uh, following the CRA at 10 a.m. May I have a motion to that effect? And it's going to break everybody's heart. So moved. Thank you. <laughs> we have a motion. Heart, I'm joking. OK, we have a motion uh, by Councilman Escapo, I believe a second by Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And we will get that set. OK, and two more quick items just for the purpose of the record. Uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, you did submit um, your Form 8B for a vote that you took yes, on, I uh, did. that, that yes. you abstained from on October Tampa 10th. Yes, and sir. finally, uh, Council, I am submitting to the clerk the minutes from your tour of the Tippin Water Plant on August 20th for yep. the record. And also, yes, sir. And this is important. Tomorrow at 2 o'clock in the courtyard, Jason Marlowe, Legislative aide to Bill yes. Carlson is getting yeah. is getting married. Yeah, with uh, Pat Frank, our clerk of the court, I believe, officiating. So if you don't go down there, you can look out the window here and see all the action. That's great. So congratulations to Jason and his future, very soon future, lovely bride Nicole. And he's yeah. watching, so he's behind this wall. Yeah. Yeah. top. Yes. Two more quick items. And, and if I may, before okay. that, yeah, sorry. just uh, a, a public. Uh, um, uh, salute to Jason and, and his uh, bride-to-be. That's uh, 
uh, that's a big deal, and I know we all wish uh, you two uh, happiness and, and great abundance in your uh, marriage together. So God bless you guys. I mean that. Go I'll ahead. cut it down to one more item. Just uh, counsel, just so that you're aware, next, if you haven't looked at the calendar for next Thursday's workshop, as I calculated, you have three commendations, three presentations, and nine items, four of which are labeled staff report. So that looks like counsel in the best of times, not including public comment, that is going to perhaps run into the afternoon. So I would just ask, um, and counsel, you may want to see how you best want to address these issues when they come up, depending on how many people want to speak, um, because it is quite a lengthy agenda. So I it, it will be, I'll tell you, when it comes to the commendations and limiting them to, I do not count uh, the police officer commendations as a commendation for purposes of that rule. Uh, you know, we are, for the, for the memo that was released a month ago, we are uh, uh, getting closer and closer to realizing the, the, I think, the beneficial effects of that, but that's a day that, you know, that's as the old song goes, the girl that got away. So that, that may be the one, that the gal that got away as the song goes. So, yeah, exactly. So, okay, um, a motion to receive motion, and file. motion by Councilman uh, Maniscalco, second by Councilman Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Council is adjourned. Aye.